Welcome to vlog number six of the Kyle Davis reflection period. Uh, we're going into 2005. And by this time, I was co announcing with Code. Uh, we were doing uh, Uncut every Friday night, and uh, the, the end of 2004 with PCW was really significant. Uh, because if it weren't for Uncut, I don't think PCW would have would have uh, really lasted as long as it did. I don't think uh, at Triple Xmas 2004, a big variety of the uh, PCW uh, main main roster left uh, for different reasons. Um, Super Slam Wrestling was starting uh, in Las Colinas, and that was a really big deal. Uh, of course, they were the next big Texas wrestling company. Uh, they were going to be in HD and all kinds of garbage. And they had one, I think they had one night of TV tapings, uh, like seven hours or something. It, it, from what I heard, it, it, it just didn't go very well. Uh, so guys like uh, Jared Steele, uh, Chris Stevens, uh, uh, Fox and Atlas, uh, Gabe Roach. I think a, just a big variety of the of the core main event top tier PCW guys were gone, and uh, some of them just really never came back. Uh, Demarco and and Hoyt uh, stayed, and uh, Hot Stuff Fernandez. Fernandez also stayed uh, after Triple X was so four. Uh, so that created a big void at the top of the card. Uh, so going into 2005, uh, they really had to shift things around and, and, and move people up into higher positions. Uh, guys like B.J. Turner, uh, uh, Brett Anthony, uh, John Allen, uh, uh, guys like guys like that, uh, uh, Brett Idol. Uh, you know, Action Jackson was still there. They just uh, uh, that was a real tumultuous period, from what I remember. And it was the guys who started out on Uncut that came through and uh, and really saved Full Throttle, I think, and and put on some of the best shows that PCW had seen. Uh, I w one specific thing I'll, I'll, I'll touch on real quick. Uh, Genocide '05. Uh, I remember Jeremy Young uh, main evented with uh, Steve DeMarco, and uh, it was very random. Jeremy Young attacked DeMarco like the week or two before, out of nowhere. Nobody knew who he was. He had never been a PCW before, and then uh, he was he was main eventing with DeMarco at Genocide, and that and that that seemed very. Uh, I remember that being very random. Uh, I, I never thought Jeremy Young was really that great. I, I was I was never a, really a huge fan of his. Uh, nice, he was a nice enough guy, but I just I didn't I didn't see him on that level. I guess. Uh, getting back to Uncut, uh, uh, early '05 is uh, is when I met Robert Evans for the first time. Uh, he had worked. Uh, in in Dallas, uh, it, I I had never seen him before personally, but I'd, but uh, you could tell that he was he was a professional from the first time I met him. He looked the part. He was his character uh, in a sense. Um, the first time I met him, uh, we talked about uh, a f we talked about Full House actually of all things. So those who know Robert know that that's not really a surprise at all. Uh, great entrance music, great character. Uh, Robert is another one of those guys who I'm very happy is has gone on to bigger success in Ring of Honor and in Chikara. Very happy for him. Uh, I believe he's living up in Philadelphia now and has been for some time. A little bit before that is when I met Gigolo James Johnson. Uh, he was doing the Dark Dragon character, and I've I've told him this before, but not recently that he was he was uh, one of my favorite. Double turns uh, in PCW Uncut. Uh, in late 2004, he was uh, like the lackey of the tribe. 
Like he was just a little, uh, you know, everybody would push him around or whatever. Like he carried around a coconut, and uh, you know, he was the misfit or whatever. And uh, Stephen Murphy at the time was one of the biggest faces uh, in Uncut, and he was for a while. Stephen Murphy was, he was consistently popular at PCW. Even when he turned heel, he was still popular. Anyway, I think it was. Uh, King Richard slash Dick Loin, whoa, I think he was involved somehow, but it ended up being uh, a double turn. Gigolo turned into Gigolo, and Stephen Murphy turned heel and joined the tribe, and it was just, it was fantastic. And I remember being the sweetest super kick I've ever seen. So, Gigolo, uh, whenever you watch this, if you can uh, clarify on that story, that'd be great. Cause I, I, I loved that angle. That was. October, November, December of '04, somewhere in there. Uh, Dave Dunnings and Andy Dalton. I also met them around this time. Uh, I ring announced Dalton's very first match at PCW in January of 2005. Uh, he was managed by uh, by Corman, Joey Corman, great guy, and uh, they faced uh, Sean Cordova at PCW. Uh, that was really that was really uh, uh, instrumental meeting him. Uh, Dalton was another uh, mainstay at Uncut who uh, I think he should have been on full throttle more, but you know I don't think he met what the Bussies saw as uh, as full throttle material, which is true for a lot of Uncut guys that the Bussies didn't see them uh, in a certain light, uh, uh, and which was their loss. But the Uncut the Uncut full throttle roster was so different. They were both good, but just they were different, even though it was the same company. Uh, Keith Lee, Kevin Payne, he was another one. I got to see one of his very first matches. Uh, he was wearing a Texas A&M shirt. I think he came out of the crowd, and you could tell instantly that he was going to be very special. And, uh, um, and then uh, March of 2005, I believe it was Road to Destruction was the big show in March. It was we always had our big shows the night before PCW's big show, so they kind of correlated. So it just made a weekend of, of big shows. I got a call that week from Steve DeMarco, who had taken over bookings at the time for Uncut. He he would he would continue to be the booker for a while on Uncut, and uh, he called me. I'll never forget it. I was actually at the Park Small, uh, and uh, he he asked uh, he called and. You know, said he wanted to talk about the future of Uncut with me, ring announcing, and I thought, you know, uh, I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna get cut. You know, he's making changes. You know, I'll have to go back to production or whatever. And he asked if I wanted the sh the the spot full time to be the sole ring announcer. And I was uh, I was very shocked. Uh, I didn't think that I had really done that well up to that point. And for someone of his magnitude to to think that I could handle that position. Uh, I, I was I was so honored and happy, uh, and so they made Code a, uh, a full time manager. He went on to do Code Enforcement. Uh, I, I loved Code Enforcement. That was uh, Gigolo and and uh, Dick Loin, uh, King Richard, uh, um, Ashton Cage, I believe. Uh, Richter was involved. Uh, uh, I think I'm I think I'm missing somebody, but I, I liked Code Enforcement a lot too. Uh, also, uh, um, oh Mace Malone, another guy who started out on a cut around this time. Uh, I loved I love Mace a lot. He's one of the one of the nicest guys, and he was uh, so talented. Uh, he he was Mace was. He looked like he belonged in the ring, and he was. Mace was probably the first PCW uncut guy to move on to full throttle and really, really get uh, jump started there. So that was uh, that was uh, the early part of 2005. Uh, next time we'll uh, we'll get my we'll get more into 2005 with uh, Graham Turner and uh, uh, more stories of code enforcement. And uh, and I think that'll do it for 2004, the early part. Uh, once again, guys, thank you all very much for your uh, your feedback, and I look forward to getting back with you soon. And uh, Gigolo, don't forget, help clarify that story for me. I really like that double turn. Alrighty, thank you guys very much.